purpose of this talk is to give you a brief, a brief introduction to Ballerina and to play a little bit with it. So when you come out of this talk, you've at least seen a little bit of Ballerina and understand why it's important. Um, you may want to try it as well. So uh, here we can see from, can you still hear me, right? OK, from the 1970s forward, uh, the way that we build systems and the way that this system communicates has changed. So before, we used to have monolithic architectures, and now we started breaking this into the 80s and 90s with internet. And now, coming forward in 2020, we have a multitude of microservices. Sorry, I think this one is. Um, so the way that we build system has changed dramatically. Um, what I want to show you is that with this disaggregation of services, uh, what we have now is an explosion of communication. So the way that this used to be is that you have very little communication to the outside world. And now you have multiple services communicating with themselves and communicating with the outside world. So this has sent to a lot more endpoints that we used to have before. Uh, I go through the slides very quick, and then I do a demo. So that's why I'm rushing through the slides so we can have time for the demo. Um, so having a lot of endpoints means that we have a lot of issues that we have to deal with. So transactions, circuit breaking, and all of the stuff that you see over there is something that you need to be aware of. It's something that you need to take care of so you can communicate between these microservices. And traditionally, we have integration products and general purpose languages. Um, the problem with this is that the integration products as enterprise service bus, BPM, et cetera, are not agile. Um, on the other hand, the programming languages that are agile, they are not built for integration. So there is space in the middle that hasn't been taken by anything yet. So that integration gap is where Ballerina sits. And you can have more information about why they're not agile and why they're not made for integration. So let's go back. So this is where Ballerina sits. So that was a, a bit rushed, but I wanted to give you a brief introduction of why Ballerina was important and where it sits. And so what Ballerina is, is a compiled language, type safe, concurrent programming language. So this sounds a little bit like not much. So what we're going to get to is uh, what, how it's composed, right? So the design principles for Ballerina is that everything that you create in code it can then be seen as a sequence diagram. And why a sequence diagram? Because sequence diagram helps you understand how these services are communicating to each other and what you get from these communications and everything that happens, basically. <coughs> it's easier for us to see a diagram than to see code. But you can express more elegantly things in code than in diagram. So it's a bit of a two things that you need to understand. So the code generates a diagram, or you can do the other way forward. But uh, to me, in my personal experience, uh, nothing beats code. So that's why it's important to know how to program code. If I don't know how many of you still program code, but uh, everything, I mean, computers run code. They don't run diagrams. So code is paramount. Uh, traditional programming languages don't really understand network. They understand files. And obviously, in Linux and in Unix, you can map anything to a file, so things work over the network. But those languages were not built with the concept of a network and don't really understand how that works. Ballerina, on the other hand, understand that a network is a network and that a file is a file, and it makes a clear distinction between them. And the other things that Ballerina does very well is concurrency. So again, when you are having communications over the network, uh, those communications are not happening instantly. So it takes a bit of time to communicate, to send data, to receive data. So uh, traditionally, <coughs> programming languages uh, deal this in a very uh, an elegant way. So you create a lot of boilerplate, a lot of wrappers, and you basically create this sort of spaghetti code that you have to deal with what happens, what if this takes too long, what. Um, Ballerina has a very clear way to deal with this that is much, much better and is very easy to do. Um, the other thing that Ballerina does very well is that I understand the latest technologies such as containers and communities or orchestration. Um, it allows you to basically work with this out of the box. So you don't have to, on a, pro, on a traditional programming language, these things are beyond the language. With Ballerina, these things are part of the language. OK, so the same things that we've seen before. Ballerina does all of that thing that we've seen that were complicated 
easy. And here we can see some of the extensions that Valerian has. So communities, Docker, Jaeger, Prometheus for uh, analytics, and etcd knows about Istio, knows about console, uh, knows <coughs> about uh, authentication protocols, knows about queues, knows about databases, and it integrates well with uh, IDEs. So I'm going to demo Visual Studio Code, but it works on IntelliJ as well. Um, this is old. This is not the latest version. So the latest version is uh, 103. Uh, when I did the slides, this was the latest version. So there's a new version that came last week. But uh, what's important to know is that we are now stable. So over the last three years, we'll be building uh, Ballerina. And about two months ago, we released the first stable version. And we've been doing improvements ever since. And we'll continue to do improvements. And Ballerina runs. Uh, obviously on Windows, on Linux, and everywhere else, because basically it runs wherever a JVM works. So uh, Java runs pretty much everywhere, even on, on the Land Rover over the moon as well, or whatever they're sending it now. So uh, it could run over there as well. As long as it runs uh, Java, then it can run Ballerina. One thing that Ballerina has is that it has a repository where you can search for uh, modules. So suppose you want to communicate to I don't know, Ethereum, for example, then you can do it by downloading the Ethereum component from the, uh, the Ballerina Central. And there is a lot of components created over there. You can quickly search it. So this is for the people that do programming, similar to uh, when you pull packages from Node or Golang. So it's very similar to that. So you have a lot of extensions already created and already battle tested that you can just pull and start uh, coding right away. So let's do the demo. <laughs> Um, so we, ah, sorry, I didn't start. Um, okay, so I don't know how much we're doing with time because this thing is not running, but. You've got 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Let me put this. <coughs> Try to face this. Okay, you can probably do it in less than 20 minutes. So, first thing, Ballerina, it's. The extension from Ballerina file is bald. So I'll create a Ballerina file here. I've already installed the extension for Visual Code. So you can see that it's, uh, well, you will see soon that it's interpreting Ballerina and understands Ballerina. So the first thing we do, we do import Ballerina HTTP. This is very similar to any programming language where you tell the libraries that you want to use, right? So then I'll do a service. And I'll tell it that I want it to listen on port 8080. Sorry. Once I create the service, uh, I need to tell what resources are available on the service. So think about it as uh, uh, you know the path when you do browse the website, you have slash forward everything else. So <coughs> so I do HTTP resource, and then. Because Ballerina is a well understood by visual code, and it will fill everything. Uh, so this is the path that I want to do. So I'll say, well, say hello. Um, this will have a caller and a request. So those who come from a Node.js background know this very well. So basically, I can interact with the request to see what parameters are coming, um, with the caller to stay in the response, which is what I'll demo, I'll demo in a second. So, so now what I can do is I can say, Caller um, respond with something. And I say, hello, world. OK, so this is going to tell me that there is a problem. And this, that I, this is responding. I'm not, not saving that variable anywhere. So I'm not saving that response anywhere. So I'll say, var response equals. So because Ballerina builds into a jar file, I can build this now. Sorry. So this command build will just take that file that I've given and it will output a jar file that I can see here. So, well, you can see it here. Sorry. So if I do Java, sorry, 
uh, so it all, all, so basically, wait, seven lines of code without doing tricky things like putting everything in one line. And I already have a server that is responding to something that I'm going to send now. So, well, sorry. I have something from before. So I can do curl localhost 8080. Then I do the server that I created. So this is a bit small for me, so it has to be small for you too. So it responds basically what I created. So not bad for seven lines of code. So this doesn't do much yet, but so far we can see that things such as a service and connections and respond to that are built in. So what it basically does is saves you a lot of time. There is not a lot of boilerplate that you need to do. Just create the service, create the resource, and off you go. So, but, sorry, I'll drink a bit of water. So what I want to do now is this is only interesting as, as much as So a web service is useful when you can send information and get information back. So what I want to do now is transform this get request into a request that I can send information. So those of you that know about uh, HTTP and requests know that that's a post request. So what I'll do now is transform that get into a post request and send some data. So with Ballerina, what I have is uh, Types. So on web services, objects are not very useful because uh, those of you who know about Corba uh, knows that uh, it gets a little bit messy dealing with objects over the internet. So what we're going to do here is, uh, so sorry, uh, web services like evolve nowadays to communicate with JSON, which is the language that is very, it's a format that, sorry, not language, a format that is very simple to create objects and send objects over the network. So uh, what I want Ballerina to do is to accept that JSON information and process that or do something on it. So Ballerina understands JSON pretty well. So uh, let's do it out of the box. So I'll do type, and I do I create a type person, which you could actually name it anything, but I'll just name it person. Uh, and what I want this to do is to be a record, and including the, the information that it contains. So let's say I want the string for name. <coughs> and it's giving me an error, I guess this needs. Okay, so basically uh, now I created this type. So, and it can contain, sorry, can you see what? It can contain any types of uh, primitives inside. So what I want now is to modify this request to uh, and modify the server and, and this resource to now accept the post. So I do this. So I don't remember everything from memory, but method. So say you need to get a post. I can put, uh, it's an array, so I can put all of the methods that it takes. And then body, I want this to contain a person. Um, what it consumes. So it's telling me that this is supposed to work so this is supposed to work with a record called person, but I'm not having this record in the request. So this is uh, one of the beauties of having a language that is strongly typed that you can basically see errors <coughs> as you are building your applications. If this if I didn't have this, uh, I could probably have forgotten that or forget or do a casting that is making me then later on have an issue. So I can just put service person, sorry. Um, so I can now do hello, I think you are. So we can give it a try. The syntax in curl to send the post request with uh, 
the content type is a little bit tricky. See if I can remember. So I scroll, localhost. Oh, I can do that from the previous one. Sorry. So minus uh, x do post minus h. Uh, this comes from the RSC for HTTP content type. Sorry. And what I want now is to stay in data. So minus D. <coughs> and I want to say in my name. So fingers crossed I haven't done anything wrong. Ah, I did something wrong. So I forgot to start the service. OK, so. I'm using here all my sesh, so that's where you get this. Uh, so what I want to know is when there are end of line characters and everything. Uh, so this is why you get in this thing. So now it's responding to me saying that I think you're Maura. So this pretty good, I think, for the amount of lines that we've done. But just the name is not so much. So I want to add int h. So now what I'll do is to send, well, make the same mistake again. I'm going to, sorry, first I build it. And run it. So what I want to do now is to send something else. So I'll send. Uh, H and I'm actually that old. And it's telling me, uh, wait, this is wrong. Um, and you may wonder why it's wrong. It's because I define age as an integer and then I'm sending a string. So, okay, simple fix. And um, it's checking that the vari variables that I set up here are actually the types that I'm sending. And it can do that because it understands the type of variables that I'm using. And this is not something that you get very easy with other languages. So I think it's important to mention that uh, I've done that with just a very few lines of code. If you have to check for the types of all of this, then you start finding out that your code becomes like super long. And what you're actually doing is like fighting with the language because the language is not providing you the things that you need to work efficiently. Um, okay, so. What we've done so far is a very simple service that takes a person and doesn't do much. So this language was meant to be very good at communicating services and interacting with services. So I don't personally use Twitter, but I created a Twitter account just for a demo. So what I want to do is to tweet from Ballerina. Um, what I'll do, so remember I, I talked about that there is Ballerina Central that you can search for things modules that people have already created. So I can go to Ballerina Central and download the Twitter module, but since I'm already here, I can do Ballerina search Twitter. And it's telling me soon, it's telling me now that there is a module created already to communicate with Twitter. OK, so copy this. So what I want to do now is to pull that package so I can start playing with it on my code. I had some issues before with the internet being a bit slow. So this package I actually download instantly on a connection. That is good. OK, so I pulled that package. So it means that I can import it now. Import. I won't put Ballerina now because this is an external module. So I need to put the name of the module. So this is a two. Twitter. Okay, so again, there's an error because I have created an import that I'm not using, so let's use it. So Twitter, sorry. Twitter, Twitter configuration. So it's a, a little bit of a configuration that I need to set up here because to communicate with an external API, you need keys and you need things. So I need to Twitter, oops. 
Okay. And I could go to the module and find the information, but I've already done that here. So, sorry, it's this one. So, uh, the configuration takes these parameters, so the client ID, client secret, and the access token. Uh, those of you who work with APIs know this is the standard. So, I'll fill these details later, but there's now work on what I need to do. So, let's go Twitter. I'll uh, create a client. And I pass this configuration that I've done before. Okay, so I haven't filled this in, but already have a client that can deal with Twitter. So let's do a tweet. And I call this Twitter client. And these are the methods that I'm, I'm getting from that module. So my okay, so this is all you need to tweet, but it's telling me that there is an error because uh, tweet actually uh, returns either the status of uh, the tweet or an error, as you can see here. So with Ballerina, you can, uh, it's, Ballerina is intelligent enough to know that you can return the status when you make a call or an error if something bad happens. So traditionally with languages, you uh, would wrap this with exceptions and stuff like that. With Ballerina, this is much, much faster. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is create a variable that says like tweet result, oops. Um, I haven't specified what type is this, but Ballerina will, depending on what I get from this tweet, then will set the variable to an error or to a status. If So I can put, oops, if Twitter result, sorry, Twitter is error, do something. Else, Let's make this like this. Okay, so I left this code here just to, for the sake of it. It's a bit faster to, to do this. So what I want to focus on is this on the error. Uh, <coughs> what I'll do now is respond to the client who made the call to the server that there was an error while <coughs> calling Twitter. Twitter respond. So I put this here. So notice as soon as I type, uh, I only get the methods available to the error. So it understood that this variable was set up to error because I asked for, so I did, did some uh, safe checking over there to know that this is an error. And now inside that if, it only shows me the things for the error. So uh, there's some intelligent things doing in the background to know that only show me the things for an error. So if I were to check here, tweet the result, um, I think you are on the result, sorry. If I were to put here, sorry. Um, I should not get Twitter error because this is it's not an error that I'm getting in this site. So there isn't any converting to string here, so that's why it doesn't give me any anything that I can use here. So let's return it as it is. Ah, sorry, that's my thing. So there probably was something that I could convert into string, but it's uh, I'll deal with this, I'll show you later. So what it's telling me now, this is very important, is that uh, what I'm getting from this service is tainted. So uh, in this, this concept is that when you, when you get something from an external service, you should do some safety checks on that content. 
So basically, understand that things could happen over the wire. You, somebody could be uh, impersonating that service and sending you some information that you can act on upon and then hacking other servers or doing something that is not what it meant to do. So I should really check what Twitter is returning and do something, not just return that straight away. So all this uh, functionality is meant to help you develop services. In this case, because it's a demo, um, because I trust what Twitter sends me doesn't contain anything malicious, then I can untaint <coughs> that result. So, oops. So now it's not going to complain that I haven't dealt with this properly. Uh, so if we check here, Twitter result, I get all the methods that I get that are not on the error. So these are the results that I'm getting if the if the call to Twitter was successful. So, for now, let's leave it there. Uh, so the only thing I need to do is to fill these details. So, could you please look the other way around so I put my details? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. Uh, so what I'll do here is just use the config. Sorry, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit, but I don't want to type all this. So it's very easy. So all I do is say read this configuration from a secret and complaining that I haven't done the proper import. So okay, I'll do the proper import. Serena. Okay. Now this will actually fail if I could, if I run it like this because I haven't actually copied. Sorry. I haven't actually copied my secrets. Um, the way you create secrets with Ballerina, to do it live, I'll have to show you the real data, so I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you how it actually does it. So Ballerina Encrypt will enter a value, so I'll say like Mauro, whatever, and then a secret password, so I'll say whatever. This is just a test, so let's put a test. And then it's telling me that, okay, so I, I've encrypted that variable, sorry, that value, and now you can put this in a configuration file. So if I actually open this configuration file, you see that I've done this previously with the keys for my Twitter account. So I think this is not complete. So I have my person, my Twitter configuration, reading it from a client, from, sorry, from an encrypted file. And I have my Twitter client. OK, so let's give it a go. It needs the password that I put before. So I'm going to tell you what it was. But now it's compiling the file, reading that configuration. Um, should work. So again, this is a jar file, so let's run it. <coughs> and this is my password. OK, so the last thing I need to do, this is going to be messy. I'm going to call the same uh, service that I created. Um, it's telling me that I think it's malware. But what I actually wanted to show you is like if it posted something on Twitter. So let's go to my Twitter. So I don't really use Twitter, but I created a Twitter account for this demo. So if I refresh, I hope to see a tweet that I just created. I don't know if you can see. So it actually did uh, create a tweet. So great. Um, again, uh, I did this with very few lines of code. And imagine if this was a very complicated uh, communication that you're doing with many services. Things may get a little bit tricky. And you may not, because it's so simple here, then you understand everything. But the beauty of Ballerina is that it can generate a sequence diagram. So you can see what Ballerina <coughs> has created for us. So. Ah, oh, it's actually, I need to make this a bit bigger. So I usually run it at a much higher resolution. So you see that it makes a call to Twitter. What I get from Twitter, if it is an error, send the response that it's an error. And if not, say, think you're out. And if you actually click on the graph, it tells you what part of the code is doing that. Now, this is incredible. And imagine, like, you're building very complex microservices. And what this is going to allow you to do is to see 
how these servers are communicated in real time, no longer you're going to have the problem that your sequence diagrams are outdated. And it, I mean, the code, the code is the source of truth, right? This is what the computer runs. And this is going to auto-generate the diagrams for you. So I think that's pretty good. Um, OK, so this is what I wanted to show you. And I hope you like it. Uh, but there's one thing more I wanted to show you. So, so far I've shown you that, it's, uh, that it does a lot of things for you, that it's easy to work with Ballerina, that you don't need a lot of boilerplate. And I'm dealing with errors. I'm doing a lot of things in here. But I haven't shown you how it really understands containers, how it really understands orchestration. So let's do a little bit of that. So I'm going to kill this. It's going to be messy. So. If I wanted to run this on Kubernetes or on a service, on, on, on one provider, I need to pack this into a Docker machine. And then I need to create, I mean, basically, I need to put all the stuff in a configuration file and let it run. So but Ballerina can help us with that. So I can do import Ballerina, doc, sorry, Docker. Um, I can annotate that from here. So first thing I need to do is, because the container needs to know which port is running, so I'm going to change this a little bit. So I'll put it here and then remove it from Lancer. So HTTP. So I'll just go from here. Okay, this is going to be very quickly. Sorry, I'm running a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, so, I think I've done anything wrong. Okay, so what I'll do now is just annotate it very quickly. So, I'll do Docker config and what Docker needs. I don't remember everything, so let's do the name. Uh, hello, world. I'm going to do the version of this. Image that I'm creating, batch 1.0. Um, this is actually running a configuration file. Remember when I put my credentials. So again, this is, I don't want to do it from zero, so I'll just copy from here. So I rehearsed this and I made a mistake there, so <laughs> I'm covering my back. Uh, it's basically copying that configuration file. And then Docker expose. Uh, I'll do the decrypted one so I don't have to put the password when I'm doing it. So, ballerina build. So now, whoops. Ah, okay. So now because I'm running this in a container, I need to be a little bit more careful, even the data that I'm sending to connect into it. So I'm going to untaint this variable that I'm sending for my name. It's actually not being used much, though. There, but OK, so uh, what it does now is just it's compiling that code, but it's actually going to do a little bit more now. Hopefully, we'll be able to see it before it gets too late. So it's going to build the Docker images for me. And if I were doing this Kubernetes, that is possible. It's very easy to do as well. It would generate all the YAML files that you need to do a deployment on Kubernetes. And so it will give you just the code that you need to paste to run that Kubernetes service. And you can annotate to say, like, I want this to be an old port, how many CPU processing power I need, how many uh, restrictions I'm putting on the memory, et cetera. OK, as time please, I have to give you one more minute. Late, OK, let this <laughs> uh, do the image. I had issues doing this before because it needs to pull uh, some, obviously, you pull an image from Docker, and the connection here is terrible. <coughs> but um, things cross. I've already done this offline, so I can just put the code otherwise. Let's give it 10 more seconds to see if it works. <laughs> um, Okay, well, this, imagine this works fine. I mean, it's actually going to work. It's going to take a long time. Uh, what it will give me is, sorry, 
Let's cancel this for now. It's going to give me this command, right? So I can run this directly. And if I do docker ps, you see the my container is running here. Um, docker, sorry, docker. Twitter won't allow me to post the same tweet twice. So I'm going to delete this one. So if I now make a call, this is actually going to the container. Um, if I refresh this, I should see my tweet. So that's it. I hope you like it. And there is uh, obviously more information available. Uh, present, sorry. Um, Ballerina.io, GitHub, etc. Thank you. Thank you.